The Forbidden Sonic Mario Makeout from Brazil. An animation so cursed it may have ended the second Nintendo console wars for good. In 2016, one Brazilian man had had enough. He set out to put a stop to the 90s console wars the only way he knew how. With hot, sweaty, terrible animation. But his creation quickly took on a life of its own, becoming a wildly cursed meme whose popularity nobody saw coming. So what makes this cartoon that bad? Why do Twitter users recoil in fear at its mere mention? And how are these things always coming from Brazil? This is the legend of the Sonic Mario makeout gif. Today's art history lesson, gay animation from the 1800s and memes from Brazil. If you were online in 2016, you probably remember a very different version of the internet. Deep fried irony was all the rage, and we seemingly couldn't get enough of the Shrek, Sonic, and Prey crossovers. Which brings us to this. That year, one meme in particular struck at the core of irony-poisoned Vine users. An animation so bad, it wrapped all the way around and became amazing, developing a cult-like surge in popularity the Mario Sonic makeout gif. And if you haven't seen it, it goes something like this. For several paralyzing seconds, you witness Sonic and Mario in a frenzied, passionate embrace as they kiss and, it's implied, go on to do other stuff. And several things probably jump out at you. For one, it's very weird looking. And for two, it's not clear that anybody involved is enjoying themselves. Although their body language is pretty compelling, it's hard to overlook how utterly soulless their expressions are. And you may be thinking, well, obviously this is bad ironically, but the real reason is actually way funnier, and it has a lot to do with how this was animated, which we'll get to in a moment. But first, a quick meme history. It all went down in early 2016 at an animation workshop somewhere in Brazil, where artist Pedro Menos, also known as Menos Play, was in attendance. And you may have seen online that this actually took place in 2010, but that's because there is virtually no accurate information about the origin of this gif or when this workshop took place. So I got in touch with the artist himself, and here's what he had to say. I remember, I remember making this in 2015. It was not 2010. We were making the, the anthology of shorts. The purpose of this workshop was to get a whole bunch of artists in a room to create an anthology of animations that would all be strung together. But Pedro was there on a mission. He had the console wars on his mind. And what better way, he thought, to unite these two disparate fan bases than by taking their two most cherished mascots and making them touch each other. And before we get any further along the timeline, there's some really wacky South America Mario lore you should know. Because for reasons unknown to anybody alive today, Mario X Sonic was weirdly popular in South America in the 2010s. What the hell? Oh my god, no. So, what is Yaoi? It goes a little bit deeper than you think. To sum it up in an ad-friendly way, it's any kind of narrative media, anime, manga, books, movies, featuring two men being really really good friends. According to this 2006 article, the term originated in the 1970s as a combination of multiple phrases whose meaning ultimately boiled down to pointless. This is because the genre itself largely started as porn without a plot. But that changed over time, and by the 90s, it was largely known as media about men written by and for women. There's a lot of emphasis on romance with the heavy stuff, in many cases, being a total afterthought. And as for Mario and Sonic, no amount of irony is going to save you from the fact that Mario x Sonic is a real pairing with a real history and a real popularity in South America in the previous decade. While it's not generally common, it does exist, and even Archive of Our Own, a staple of the fanfic community, contains no fewer than 104 stories about Mario and Sonic exchanging something. And jokes aside, this isn't that shocking. Sonic has a long and storied history of inspiring many OCs, self-inserts, in more than one sense of the word, and tons and tons of fan art. But Mario is a weird choice. So weird, in fact, that Shigeru Miyamoto himself asked people to stop drawing him. But nobody cared. And that brings us back to this GIF. There is this this thing, uh, Sega and Nintendo are competitions. Mario and Sonic are people liberating themselves from the Sega and Nintendo and uh, living the love they always wanted to live. And as you can imagine, Pedro's plan involving Sonic and Mario peacefully putting their differences aside had the exact opposite effect. On February 23rd, just days after Pedro anonymously uploaded his animation online, Vine user Chris Person reposted it to the then popular video sharing platform. I posted it and uh, the next day, the thing explodes. No, no one uh, knew I, I did it. And to say it blew up 
was an understatement. As of the time of recording, it has almost 10 million loops, with innumerable reposts on GIF sites and YouTube. And the reason isn't surprising. 2016 was a very edgy time, and it was common for people to take cherished childhood characters and put them in edgelord adult situations, and then insist you were the weird one for finding it objectionable, since it was obviously ironic. There was really just something about the Shrek Mario Sonic triad that had a grip on people's minds that year. Between 2016 and 2018, the recognizable characters, the timing, and the virality these short vines could attain meant there were many corners of the internet where this animation was absolutely impossible to avoid. And to touch on a much more obvious question here, why does it look like that? During the animation workshop, Pedro was handed a black and white film whose origin I have not been able to trace, and even he himself has no idea where the movie's from, and told to draw cells over top of it. This style is called rotoscoping, and it's been around since the late 1800s. You've definitely seen it in things like Smiling Friends, Joel Haver, and those very elaborate dance sequences from old Disney films. So we're keeping the tradition alive here. And as for the glaring disconnect between their bodies and their facial expressions, part of the reason rotoscoping never caught on is because tracing over real life footage does not good animation make. The best animation tends to use tons of visual shorthand that doesn't exist in real life, and rotoscoped art often looks very deliberate and awkward. So trying to draw Sonic's face on top of live footage of a real human woman and making it look consistent is incredibly hard. So it was much easier and funnier to give them both this terrifying vacant expression. And the two of them may have really been in love and just super locked in. We'll never know. But one thing we do know, increasingly, is that Brazil is a meme powerhouse. While their meme culture is probably different from what we have in the English-speaking internet, their shit posts go crazy. Some of the best-known memes of all time are Brazilian in origin. Two Girls, One Cup, Ricardo Milos, Come to Brazil, that dancing dog we were all obsessed with a few years ago. The list is endless, and the way their memes percolate is fascinating. Brazil's meme economy is much more oriented towards WhatsApp, so memes tend to get blasted out into the atmosphere via mass forwards from group chats, meaning they lose touch with their source material much more completely than they do over here. And that partially explains why it was so difficult to obtain any solid information on the origin of this GIF. Amazingly enough, it doesn't even have a Know Your Meme page. And while it's not clear to what extent WhatsApp may have popularized this meme, as it seems to be a largely US phenomenon, it would be Shocking if it wasn't at one point mass forwarded on this app. And all that said, it's mind blowing how influential this little known animation ended up being. It goes without saying this inspired a ton of fan art. Now, was it ironic given the time period and the subject matter? Almost certainly yes, but people nevertheless put a lot of effort into this. So much so that in 2018, YouTuber and artist Figburn led the charge on a massive animated collab, recreating the Take On Me music video featuring just different versions of Sonic and Mario making out sloppy style. And the legacy is clearly not over, because in 2023, YouTuber Quite purchased one of the original cells on a live stream for $4,000 US. And if you want to get your hands on one, a ton of them are still up for auction. If you want to reach out to Pedro himself, his Twitter is linked in the description. And as for the artist responsible for this all, Pedro Menos is a game dev and digital artist who maintains an online presence to this day. He regularly posts new work on his Instagram and Twitter. And while his current work doesn't really look anything like his original joke post, he's a genuinely talented artist whose impact on meme culture is only now being fully appreciated. The amount of meme spin-offs, animations, fan art, and cultural references generated by this single joke animation is genuinely staggering. Pedro Menos is truly the one guy who made Brazil come to us. Not letting it go. <laughs> Nothing will stop me. Not even. <laughs> this has been an art history lesson. So quick announcement for anybody who watched to the end. I know this one is a little bit shorter than usual. Um, I know it looks a little bit different. I changed my lighting setup and frankly, I'm much more happy with it, but you let me know what you think. And also, I was thinking of setting up a Patreon because I have to censor a lot in these videos and I feel like it's kind of losing the full experience and um, it's a really hard balance between staying monetized and actually being able to discuss the topics I want to discuss. So, so if that interests you, please let me know and thank you for watching to the end.